with you all. And with your spirit. Okay, it is a cheerful day, my friends, as we celebrate Pentecost, uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles, bond of love between the Father and the Son, within the Godhead, was poured out into the world in the person of the curve, person of the Blessed Trinity at Pentecost. And it's that coming of the Holy Spirit that changes everything, that transforms those apostles and disciples from a state of fear into a state of boldness. The young church begins to grow on Pentecost under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. Mass intentions this morning, today, Sally O'Sullivan anniversary, Margaret Kilkine anniversary, Maureen Plunkett anniversary. We have to pray as well for John Murray. John passed away during the week, I gather. He was a parishioner here and a collector. We pray for John Murray, who has passed away. Eternal rest. Grant unto him, O Lord, that your eyes will shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul, the soul of all faithful departed, with the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. We place ourselves in the presence of the Lord, present to us in and through his spirit. We acknowledge our own unworthiness before him, and we ask his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have very greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. To my faults, to my fault, to my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of our Lord. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
mystery of today's great peace, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work, when the gospel was most proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
her St. Paul to the Corinthians. No one say Jesus is Lord unless he is in the unhappy influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same Spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always the same Lord. Working in all sorts of different ways, in different people. It is the same God who is working in all, the particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as human body, though it is made of many parts, it is a single unit because all of these parts, though many, make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized, Jews as well as the Greeks, slaves as well as the citizens, and one spirit is given to us all to drink. The word of the Lord. Together. Holy Spirit, Lord of light, from the clear celestial light, that comes your name in your city. Come now, Father of the Lord. Come thou his treasure, sweet to the Lord. Come thou light of all the earth. Thou also the soul of the Thou the soul's delight to us. Thou the Lord art more sweet, less than coolness in the heat, so is in the midst of all. Light of mortal, light of mine, this is thou this heart of mine, and our inmost being pure. If thou take thy grace away, nothing pure in my mind is fair. All this good is silent to you. Hear our words and strength in you. Walking around with all kinds of 
fears that only become discovered when something happens. Those disciples in today's gospel lock themselves away in fear. And there seems to be no exit strategy. In a sense, they are expecting to experience the same fate as their master. So their fear is kind of justified. It's certainly real. We know what happened to their master. And they, the disciples, only knew it too well and expected the same. The Gospel tells us, though, that in the face of this fear, which locks people in, there is an exit strategy. There is a way out of that locked room. And that is Jesus. Jesus comes into this scenario and he brings peace. Jesus comes with peace. And he offers a greeting of peace, mentioned to us in that gospel portion. Peace be with you. He breathes the Spirit into those disciples. And everything has changed. There's a complete transformation. They are transformed from a state of fear into a state of boldness and outreach. They experience a new freedom. They are able to look back at everything that has happened with an understanding. And look forward to the future with hope. And having received the Spirit, this new Spirit, they are commissioned to go out and to share that new Spirit with the multitudes of people who need it badly. As the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. So they are sent out on mission. The word mission comes from a Latin word, which means being sent out. Being sent out with a message. And what is that message? The message is love, God's love, the victory of the Lord over sin, suffering and death. And this message is proclaimed under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we might have difficulty in understanding. What is this spirit all about? In simple terms, the spirit means love. The bond of love that exists within the Godhead, between the Father and the Son, which is poured out into the world at Pentecost, 
where everything is changed because of that. The Spirit is the second person, the, the, the third person of the Trinity, poured out into the world. And that changes everything. There is one Spirit, but a variety of gifts. Just to go back again to explain what the Spirit is all about. The Spirit is love. The bond of love between the Father and the Son poured out into the world at Pentecost, which in a way, of course, marks the beginning of the Church as we know it. And how the Church proclaimed a message under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. And how that Spirit is with us, with us right now. The Lord is present to us right now, in and through His Spirit. The Spirit which we receive at baptism. And what we are called to do is to decipher the gifts of the Spirit. How we have received as individuals, how we have received the gifts of the Spirit. And how we are called as well to appreciate the gifts of others. It's very important to remember that we are all gifted in some way or another. Every person here in the church is gifted in some way or another. And that even includes the parish priest. We are all gifted in some way or another. Nobody has all the gifts. No group of people has all the gifts. Nobody has a monopoly. St. Paul speaks about those gifts in the second reading. A variety of gifts. And the purpose of those gifts. The gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit who guides us, inspires us, leads us. And St. Paul compares the gifts of the Spirit to the body. We know that the body is made up of various parts. Each component has a function of its own. But each component contributes to the well-being of the whole, to the well-being of the body. And that's why the gifts are given. They are given as a contribution, benefiting the body as a whole. So we have to harness those gifts of the Spirit. They need to be harnessed in every individual in a way that contributes to the benefit of the body, the benefit of the community. Here we're talking about a community of faith, of hope, of love. Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, was a great moment of transformation because the coming of the Holy Spirit meant and means that the Lord it continues to be with us in a, this very special and spiritual way. He is with us in and through His Spirit. And that spirit is the energy force, it is the petrol, the diesel, that moves the engines of our lives. 
Search is the power of the search. It's empowering. It is ever present. And we pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. We say that prayer to the Holy Spirit to fire us up, to renew us, to be with us, to inspire us, to be our advocate, our consoler, our strengthener. That's precisely what the Spirit is. He is always with us, enlightening us, giving us wisdom, helping us to love, helping us in our faith and in our hope. Come Holy Spirit, we stand now and bless our I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, because in our faith and substantial to follow. Through him all things were made for us, and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was in the hand of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sins, crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who receives the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, who is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy and Catholic apostolic church. I confess with baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and in all of the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. As we rejoice in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, let our prayers come before the Father with praise and their gratitude. For the church to the world, that the Holy Spirit may end divisions between Christians and unite us in prayer and words of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who live in moment, that the Holy Spirit may enlighten their minds and grant them wisdom in serving God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our souls, that we may use the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us to serve one another and so fulfill Christ's commandment of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those sitting or preparing for examinations, that the Holy Spirit may guide their efforts and renew their hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or in distress, that the Holy Spirit may heal and comfort them and restore their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones and all the faithful departed, that they may be granted eternal life and peace according to the word to the Lord's promise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us ask the intercession of Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace the, Lord. the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving God, fill us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We may praise your merciful love to the ends of the earth, and it is in all our prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God, the Almighty Father, and the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the law of his holy church. Grant we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit, be revealed to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice, and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord Amen. be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, your beloved, the Holy Spirit today. Your beloved, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those who remain your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together in the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Oh 
Our glory and honor is yours forever and ever.